Hello, friends. Bless and peace on you. Call you guys bless, bless, bless. Leanne and I just got back from an afternoon motorcycle ride. Was out on the road for about three and a half hours today and went and did some things and we come back. You know, when you ride a bike, you have a lot of things to think about. And just after this incredible weekend, like my goodness, after actually the past couple of weeks, we've been hearing God speak and been a part of so many things. It's important just to stop and just digest everything that's going on because it's a lot. I mean, a lot. We just got back, as you know, from the Redemption Road Trip. Uh, we rescued 34 kids in nine days, which was incredible. Hey, Susanna, so happy to see you. Lynn, so happy to see you. And uh, then, you know, you get back from that. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, it's such an emotional trip. And, you know, rescuing kids, and being a part of that, come back. Did my uh, atomic Bible study the other night talking about that tremendous trial and how that it wasn't Jesus that was on trial. It was Pontius Pilate. It wasn't Jesus that was on trial. It was a mob. It wasn't Jesus that was on trial. It was Caiaphas. Herod was definitely on trial, and they all lost. And then I had a good friend of mine that was in a big trial in uh, Dallas, Texas, at the same exact time, and the Lord just turned it, and the judge did what was right and what was needed to be done for the past several years. And we saw that overturned. And and then we had the ladies conference at, at Open Door Church on Friday and Saturday, Thursday night, Friday and Saturday. And then we had the food outreach on Saturday. And then Sunday, we had two church services of our 28th anniversary as a church. Hey, Brad, so good to see you. Hello, Jocelyn. Love you. And then, um, and then we left and we went up to the Daystar Studios yesterday and we filmed last night for three hours. We did a Yom Kippur, uh, actually a fundraiser with Larry Huck. And we did that to raise a bunch of money to do a bunch of projects in Israel. And it was all successful and everything was good. We were fasting yesterday. Leanna and I got home at about 1130. And then I was like, man, should I eat or should I not? And I was like, no, I think I should eat. That's what I think I should do. <laughs> like, I am starving. And uh, being with Larry Huck and all those guys, um, Larry Huck is an extraordinary human being. Just just love Pastor Larry Huck. Just absolutely love him. Love Joni. Her new husband, Doug, is a really good guy. Their family are really good to me. And uh, it was very, it was a big deal to be a part of all that. So and then, boom, got a day off. Tomorrow, have a tremendous schedule. Starts at 8.30 in the morning with a board meeting and then filming all day long until late tomorrow night. Doing lots and lots of ministry in lots of different ways. All right, the reason why I'm telling you all that is to say this. It's very important, brothers, sisters, that in the midst of living 10,000 lifetimes in a week, like what you and I do, in the midst of a day where there are so many different things that happen on so many different plates, it is very important that there are times that you just stop and you connect all the dots and you say, Lord, what are you speaking? What are you showing me? What are the things I'm doing right? What are the things I'm doing wrong? I made some big mistakes last week. Um, was a part of some things I shouldn't have been a part of and actually didn't handle myself very well in a couple of different situations. I'm just like, ugh, yuck. And then in the midst of that, go, okay, but what did I learn from that? And how do I go about being a kingdom guy in the midst of that? And then all the things that there are obviously huge wins on, the rescue of kids, the, the housing that goes with that, the things that happened out of Redemption Ranch, both in West Texas and also in uh, Southern Mexico, um, those things. What else needs to be done to make sure that the wind goes all the way through? That it's not just, it's not just something, hey man, you did that, you went there, you got the t-shirt, you did the thing, you took the picture, you gave the hug, and then you left. No, no, there's a lot of work now that has to be done. And and then also to to, to work with your teams, which is a whole nother level of working with teams of people that are in partner with, partnership with you in ministry. And it's like, man, we have to get this thing done, that thing done, this thing done, that thing done, because this thing has to go all the way through. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I'm just telling you today in the solitude of my beautiful bride hanging on to me while we were just zooming down the road and thinking about all these things. What are the things that need to be finished up? 
What are the things that need to put an absolute stop to and never be a part of that mess again? What are the things that, okay, I need to carry on? What are the things I need to follow up and say thank yous on? What are all those things? Boom, I get this big revelation. And it's some really good language. And I'd like to share that with you right now and say this. There are people and ministries and situations that you can just stay away from. There are people in ministries and situations that you can bless. And then there are people in ministries and situations that you partner with. And those are never the same things. And one of the mistakes that I've made in being a leader in all the ministries that we've got connected with over the past uh, 32 years of full-time ministry and 32 years of food bank, 28 years of Open Door Church, as there's a lot of people that I have partnered with that I just needed to bless. And there are some people that, in some ministries that I have just partnered with, that I have just blessed that I needed to partner with. I think that there's a next level of wisdom that you and I can jump in on where we go, okay, Lord, what are the ones that we need to bless? And what are the ones that we need to absolutely partner with? And what are the ones, what are those situations, those opportunities that God has given us that deserve all of my focus, attention, our time, our talent, and our treasure for who King Jesus has called me to be and for the part of the kingdom that he's trusted me with? Today, my prayers are very much like that. Um, and it's what I'm thinking about. And what if you're a guy like me, man, you want to partner with everybody. Um, I've got a lot of criticism since we had our big problem with our with that major witch that we had deal with us down on the Amazon, the witchcraft that was involved. And there, and a lot of people were like, "What kind of an idiot would take a uh, gift from a witch anyway?" Well, I'm that kind of guy. I have been that kind of guy because I've made friends with witches all over the planet Earth and have actually won many of them for Jesus. Uh, I haven't. I'm just not, I haven't, I'm just not scared of them. And just like, I know that they're on the wrong team. And part of it is naive. Part of it is being naive. Another part of it is um, simply the love for people that God has given me. And it's like, it's a lot like a lot of the traffickers that we bust, you know, dedicated my entire life, my entire life to rescuing kids and helping kids and helping people that are enslaved. And you know, my heart just breaks when I start thinking about it. And it's like, we have everything our church does, everything, all of our ministries, Open Door Church, Spark Worldwide, Answer International, the Open Door Food Bank, Troy Brewer Ministries, all of that has to do with, with, I want to see the captives set free. But I also realize that, you know, a lot of times we've actually busted traffickers We've paid for the entire operation, sent them to prison. And then the Lord tell me, go by and go see them. And I go by and go see them. And it's a it's a 24-year-old woman who is looking at spending the next 40 years of her life in prison if she survives it in a Central American prison or in an Indian prison or in a Nepalese prison. And then going, you know what? I'm the guy that sent you to prison and I'm the guy that funded it but I'm also the guy that's here to tell you, I know that you have kids and I wanna see if we can help your kids. And it's like, you shouldn't get involved in that at all. I can't help it, I wanna be involved. I want to be a part of bringing the kingdom into those things and just going, I, I wanna see her life transformed too. Now I want her in jail, I do want her in jail. And I want her separated from society and I don't want her to ever have the chance to be able to traffic kids again. And you'd be surprised at how many of these traffickers are actually women. And there are women who were trafficked as kids and they kind of moved up in the ranks because of their survival. And uh, they got good at it and they just turned into the devil. Again, they need to be in jail. And I'm happy to do that. Happy, happy, happy to do that. But also once they're incarcerated, if they need to be helped and if they have their own kids, if the body of Jesus doesn't help them, who, who in the world else is going to help them? Okay, that's not somebody you partner with. That is somebody you bless, right? 
there are some situations that, that a lot of us would say, well, I would just avoid that whole situation. Well, if this is your ministry, you can't avoid it. And so I've been thinking some really deep things today. I've been thinking about, Lord Jesus, show me in the year 2024, the remaining part of the year 2023, in this new year, 5784, whether you believe it started seven months ago or if you think it just started last week. Um, I, what are the things, Lord Jesus, that can make me the most effective for the king in his kingdom, for me to have my mind and my heart, my attitude and my focus and all those things most fully engaged in. And what are the things that I'm missing that should be obvious? What are those things? What are those things that are right in front of me? Um, you know, Leanna and I have been, have been away from each other for a long time. You know, we spent 15 days away from each other. And then since she's been back, I have been incredibly busy and she's been incredibly busy. She went to Daystar with me last night and just said, try reconnecting. There you go. And um, just so that she could just be in the car with me going there and coming back. And then this morning I got up, I made her breakfast. Oh yeah. And then put her on my back on a motorcycle and off we went. And we went, we went and did some things and just did some fun things with her and those kinds of things. Friends, I, I'm like, I don't want to, and that's one of the things I've been talking to her. What do you think are the things that I'm missing? Do you think that there's anything directly in front of my face that I'm missing? And we've been having that kind of conversation. I'm, I spent the past five minutes telling you all this because I encourage you, if you ask for the wisdom of the Lord, if you do, he will give you that wisdom. If you ask him, Lord, show me the things I need to focus on. Show me the things I need to walk away from. Show me the things I need to grab a hold of. Show me the things, Lord God, that I'm missing. Show me, Lord Jesus, the things I need to not be involved in at all. Show me the things that I need to bless, just be a blessing to. And then show me the things I need to engage in in full partnership. I would, I would say to you that that's a good prayer. And so I'm going to pray that for you. I'm going to pray that for me. And then we're all going to pray that together. Okay, are you guys ready? Here we go. Father God, up here on this hill in this still, and with my friends all over the planet Earth, God, that are joining me right now. Father, I pray, Lord God, sir, for your wisdom. Your word says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who gives it liberally. And Lord God, I pray, God, for a double heaping helping of wisdom that we would know specifically the things, God, that we should be fully engaged in, the things, God, that we don't need to be involved in whatsoever, the things, Lord Jesus, that we just need to be engaged in, but because we need to bless them and just be a blessing to them. And what are the things, God, that we need to be in full-blown partnership with and consistent reliability between the two of us? What are those things? And I pray, Lord God, sir, that you would do that. And I pray, God, for every single person, Lord God, that doesn't know where they're at or what they're doing, that I find myself in so many times. I pray, Lord God, sir, for clear definition. And God, we declare, as we wrap up Rosh Hashanah, as we wrap up the 10 days of awe, and as we wrap up Yom Kippur today, Father, we declare God, seal it in your book that this year is blessed. God, that we are victorious, that we are secure, that there is a Psalms 91 hedge of protection around us, that the blessing of the Lord is evident, God, and that we will not lack for anything this year. God, I just have been seeing this thing in the spirit over and over again about you, the whole thing of, of Malchus getting his ear cut off and then Jesus putting it back on, that this is a year of that. It's a different kind of hearing. And I pray, God, for the new ability to hear. And I lift up my friends, and I lift up my partners. I lift up those, Lord God, that bless our ministry, and those, Lord Jesus, that actually partner with our ministry. And I pray, God, a Psalms 84 blessing over them in this 84th year. 
Thank you, Lord. God, that in the midst of harsh judgment all over the world, all across our nation, Lord God, God, that they stand in a place that is blessed and secure. And Jesus, I love you so much, and I'm so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, that's all for me. It's good to see so many people that have joined us. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Hey, if you want to see all of our videos, and we have a bunch of them, and my team is making new ones daily from all the footage we have from our latest Redemption Road Trip, go there. Go to, go to odx.tv and look up those videos and check those things out. Also, if you weren't a part of my Atomic Bible Study last Wednesday night, go and look that up. It's on John chapter 18. You can find that at odx.tv. And if you didn't get a chance to see our 28th church anniversary, that's also up and that's on odx.tv. All right, guys, love y'all so much. If you need prayer and if you want somebody to actually pray with you that, that can hear you, call us, call 877-413-0888. I love you guys. I call y'all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Peace out, everybody. Bye-bye.